Good evening, everyone. We are back. But we're not back with just any story. Speak to me. Y'all, his voice. We have been granted access. How does a spirit energy have enough power to make these doors shut? To experience something that no one has ever done. Good evening, spirits of the Hilson Hotel. We are constantly being watched. I say what I'm hearing, and I'm getting pulled out of the SS method. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my paranormal experience. Welcome to the Hilson Hotel. first, I didn't want the hotel. As a matter of fact, I told Randy uh, that I, think, I thought it was going to be a bad idea <laughs> that I purchased the hotel. But the longer that I worked in there, the more time that I spent there, and more, the more history that I dug up on this place, uh, I fell in love with it. I mean, it's, it was uh, just a part of history. It's just a, a great part of, of the city of Pampa. And by the way, I, I do own it now. Even though I didn't want to own it, I do own it now. Uh, and I'm glad I, I purchased it. It wasn't until that same evening when I got home that I got an email from Tim. And when I opened this email, there was a video file attached to it. This was captured in December of 2021 from inside the Hilson Hotel. It's the first piece of poltergeist activity documented in Pampa. This just shocked me. It really threw me back for a second because visual evidence like this, it's just not captured in Pampa. You know, people in our community, they just don't capture evidence like this. And if they do, they damn sure don't talk about it. So I knew the moment that I saw this footage, we had something special. I don't understand how you can't believe that there's something after you pass. It knows what you're thinking. It knows what you want to do, what you're going to do. No doubt in your mind that there's something going on. Well, we are right exactly where it had happened. I haven't had an experience like this before. It comes when it wants to, and it leaves when it wants to. Or as sudden as it began, it all stopped all the voices, everything. I mean, for how many times it's happened to me, I just believe that it is true. Good evening, everyone. We are back. But we're not back with just any story. We have been granted access to experience something that no one has ever done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my paranormal experience. Welcome to the Hilson Hotel. This special is going to be much different from what we have done in our past season of filming. We are about to uncover the most bizarre and unsettling secret that's been buried for nearly a century in this town's history. When I had looked up, they both had fear in their eyes. Like they had already experienced something. And I had heard a flock of pigeons coming my way. And so I had heard something again, I can see you, can you see me? And as, I, as soon as I heard that, started walking down the stairs and I made it about two stairs down before I started taking off running. 
We are the first and last team that will ever do this. This is our first time to ever step foot inside the Hilson, and we have no idea what to expect. Are you upstairs? Our first investigation was, you know, we literally just walked in. It was all about filling the location out and seeing what this place was. All the tile is still original. It's original out there and in the front of the building, just outside the front door, the tile says Hotel Pampa. It only stayed Hotel Pampa for about three months and then they changed it to the Johnson Hotel, which is the person, his name is Ellie Johnson. This man built this hotel. Honestly, it's almost, it's almost like walking into the past. When you walk through the doors, you can kind of still feel the energy. Um, you walk in here and you're automatically, you're not alone. Good evening, spirits of the Hilson Hotel. My name is Scotty. I have Nathan and Beth with me. We are, they're operating cameras. We're new here. We don't really know what to expect. I mean, you know, when you first walk into an investigation, it's a brand new location. You kind of go in and you're split down the middle with a 50-50 type of situation where you're like, everything could happen and then nothing could happen all at the same time. As we make our way to the second floor of the Hilson Hotel, Scotty receives his first voice. They said it twice. I heard it too, yeah. The same word twice. I know all this stuff is probably new to you because I don't believe anyone's ever been in here to investigate, but we're not here to hurt you. We're not here to disrespect you. We're just here to talk to you and let your side of the story be told. Let your voices be heard. Hi. Hi. Hello. Should I go straight or to the right? Go straight. Okay. I feel like just like this real slight like rush of air comes through us this way. I mean, I dread going dark in this. You know, and as we made our way to the second floor, you know, it was just one of those types of feelings that anything at any moment could happen. Everything was very unpredictable. It's like every room you walk walk to, there's just something in it. Like just a bed sitting in there, you know what I mean? The further you venture into these mysterious halls, it feels like you are entering into a different dimension. God, what do y'all think? That room gave me creeps too. Really walking around this place, I kind of feel like, I mean, it's still an operating hotel without it being an operating hotel. Yeah, this room's creepy. I don't know what's going on in here. Hell yeah. Like almost every room that you walk by, you look in and it just looks creepy. My name is Tim Dubry, and this is my paranormal experience. All I could see was black. And I'm facing Randy. I'm standing up while he's sitting down. And I see a white ball of light. And I'm almost about, you know, about this big. Start at the corner, and it zigzagged down to the bottom of the floor and disappeared. So. I looked at Randy and I said, Randy, what was that? 
and he just calmly never moved. He didn't turn around. He didn't even look at me. He just said, you really don't want to know. As I turn on the spirit box, I receive this. Speak to me. First thing, speak to me. When I heard this response, I was floored. It's not something I expected to hear. You know, it's not every day you turn on a spirit box and in crystal clear you hear, speak to me. Speak to me. First thing, speak to me. Who am I speaking to? All of us? You told me to speak to you. I'm speaking to you. Where are you? Come to us. Walk to us. I'm feeling like I'm watched all the time. You have that creepy feeling that something is watching you or something is following you. We're fixing to shut all of our fancy lights off and put our big cameras away. We're fixing to get some cameras out that will allow us, allow you to show yourself in your own form. We conduct our first investigation in the front lobby. As Scotty begins to enter the threshold of this door, he not only captures a direct female voice, but he is also forced to leave. Oh. What was that? That was weird. The room, there's been rumors about a lady that worked there that had died right there in that same spot. And that the rumor was a lady had uh, actually slept there and late at night when people would try to uh, come into the hotel, they would ring the bell and she would get up, come in there and wait on the customer. And the rumor is that there was a lady found dead in that sleeping area. Is this where you would sleep? Oh, I can't be there, dude. Yeah. Oh, I can't be there, dude. As soon as I got to the threshold of the door frame, I was immediately stopped by some, I'm just gonna call it an unseen force or an unknown force that pretty much told me like, hey, you will not be back here. I don't want you to come back here. It felt like we were being surrounded. The atmosphere was eerily quiet. Wow. Something just immediately told me it was like, you have, you cannot be here. Yeah, there's... Ooh, we just went that way. Yeah, there's something... I, just I got, swear to I just God, you went that weird. way, dude. I feel like I have to watch every... Yeah, like, I feel like... Around it right now. Mm -hmm. Like, everything just went eerie for a second, dude. Holy... What? Something just moved in there. Went from right to left, right to the doorway. If you're in there, I don't think my friend saw you. Can you go make the rim pod go off? It's the red light. Oh, oh my God! Oh, dude, holy! Oh my God! Something just touched my side, dude. Something just touched my side. Okay, let's walk outside. Holy! F this grab and this grip was so definitive and so aggressive that it sent me into a full-fledged panic and it was fight or flight and in that moment I decided I needed to leave because something in that very moment did not want me in that area. I think we all just kind of bolted. Mm -hmm. Oh yo. I didn't mean to freak out, y'all, but that Like, what did you feel? I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab you, like, I, I, I didn't mean okay. to go, to go. Uh-uh, that, that That's what it did. 
It came from that area. After reviewing the footage, Scotty captures what sounds like a crying female voice telling him, go, only seconds before he is forced to leave. Is this where you would sleep? Oh, I can't be there, dude. And only moments after this is when I was attacked. It's the red light. Oh, oh my god! Oh, dude, holy! Oh my god! Something just took my side, dude. Wood. There's wood in there. There's so much wood in there. This footage was captured right before we started filming. The entire lobby is completely filled with wood. Sure. <gasps> Dude. This is the most accurate you've ever been with the audio. I know. Whether these responses are paranormal or not, I am blown away by what we have documented. Our first investigation has us all on edge, but as we do our research, we discover an even more terrifying story. We found out about a man named Dr. Galzita, and he, it's documented that he's been here where he got his sign-in card and everything. In the 1930s, he traveled all over the United States. Um, as a con man. So he checks into room seven and he stays for 10 days. And in those 10 days, he decides to go down to the local newspaper, puts in an ad, and in this article, he states, looking for beautiful young women to travel back to Los Angeles theatrically and all this other stuff. The more research that I did, the darker Dr. Zeta became. Women that answered his ad, he would actually bring them back to his room and he would attempt to manipulate them. Put them under his control, his power. Basically, he would try and hypnotize these women. He also had fixations on women that were very unhealth unhealthy. Um, he would stalk women. He would find out where they're going to eat, uh, have dinner, even if they were married. The article that stands out the most to me is a woman by the name of Grace Laverne. She actually participated in one of his publicity stunts. And she was gonna be there for 48 hours. And I think he's, uh, the, Dad said, come see her eat, come see her sleep. Guys, before this was the Hilson, this was the Johnson Hotel. And we have real proof documentation that Del Zeta actually stayed here on a couple of occasions. The hotel would serve its community for the next several decades as its doors would close in 1972. For the last 70 years, it's remained abandoned, hidden in plain sight. Tim has called us to conduct the first and only investigation in history this building will ever see. You know, I can't help but ask myself this question. Did he get pleasure, satisfaction off of putting these women under this manipulation? Did he have evil thoughts, negative intentions? You know, what did he do? to these women when they were under this hypnosis. As an investigator, I want to dive deeper into this theory and I want to see if Del Zeta's energy or his spirit is still at the Hilson. Hey, Kara. Mm -hmm. I'll hook that with you. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. I heard it. Two, two different places that I heard it. Stop! Stop talking! Shh, shh, shh. There's somebody in this. Del 
It's a clear voice. There's somebody in there, dude. When we hear something that's loud enough to be a person, like this is a person moving around, we will run through the building really quick. And that's what we did that night. We checked all the doors. We checked the front door, the back door. Um, we, I, I was convinced there was someone in there, like a, like somebody off the street. We were looking outside. Um, it was very loud. There's, yeah, there's... What, what happened? It sounded like somebody came in this door and something like big was moving. Like something was moving towards me. Really? We had it on camera. Here. After you said it, I thought somebody was coming in. That's how loud it was. I may have to go back on that camera, Kara, yeah. and just review the raw audio and just see what was caught on that. You. If you don't hear it, dude, that's up because I heard the same thing, dude. It was loud. After reviewing Kara's raw audio, her camera does capture what sounds like a door violently shutting. Hey, little boy. Hey, Kara. Hmm? I heard something over here. Oh, yeah, okay. I heard it. She said I heard Stop. It. Stop talking. Sorry. Damn it. Okay. Stop! Stop talking. Sorry. Who did that? Who is that? If there's someone in this building or something, let us know. Give us a sign. What was that loud sound Kara and, Be and, uh, and Scotty heard? Oh, that was me. Oh, that was me. What did you move? just at the door. Whatever we are dealing with, it is a very dark and intelligent energy. I swear to God, I just saw a figure up there, like peek its head around me and go back around the corner, stairs, all by a footstep. Something moving up there, dude. Yeah, that's that's what I'm seeing. There's something, like there's something up there lurking no, around. I mean, I just heard the shuffling. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's okay, bro. Yeah, I get it. You're fine. Is that you? There's stuff up there. There's stuff. What's happening? I wasn't sure if that was a shuffling from one of us or if that was upset. Yeah. No, nah, whoever is up there is just pacing, waiting for us to come up there. Right. You waiting for us? Guys, we need to be on. We we need to be on alert. I can feel something fixing to happen. I don't know what it is, but something's fixing to happen. With caution, I slowly make my way up the stairs. I would be lying if I were to say I wasn't afraid of what's up here waiting for me. I know you're up there. Knock over that glass bottle. Yeah, 
Film him, Kara. What? Film Scotty. Let me tell you right now, your job's gonna be easy because I ain't moving. I do not feel like we need to be moving. I'm hearing voices coming from up there. What do you mean you're hearing voices? I just heard like two male voices come from upstairs. See, it's weird because I'm not feeling anything now. Like I was a minute ago. Maybe they're trying to trick Scotty to think he's hearing him up here, but they're actually closer to him. Yeah, I can see that many things too. So, Scotty, um, I'm just, I'm just, at, just for like research purposes here, what has got you freaked out about the upstairs right now? I just don't feel like we should go up there. I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. I just don't. Right now, I don't feel like we need to go up there. I just feel like something bad's gonna happen if we go up there. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna ignore that. Well, I understand. I don't, I, I'm just, I don't I'm just want trying to verify. Of us getting hurt. I understand. I'm just trying to verify what, like, what, what you're feeling. That's all I'm trying to say. That's it's, fine. it's pretty much just that. I just feel like if we go up there and go deep up there, one of us is going to get hurt. Like spiritually, or just like physically because of the of the building. No, it's spiritually. It's it's something with whoever's been walking around up there. He's wanting us to come up there. But for some reason, he can't come downstairs. Like, he just, downstairs isn't his spot. It's not his area. Randy, the former owner, had been there for so long, I had to believe that they knew who Randy was. So I immediately, I asked, do you know Randy? And immediately the response was, yeah. <laughs> Do you like Randy? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. And I said, Do you like Randy? And I, immediately the response was, yeah. So I said, Well, I'm the new owner now. So what do you think about that? So Randy doesn't own the hotel anymore. I do. I own it. Huh? I said, Randy doesn't own it. I do now. Well, I'll be. <laughs> and so it's, you know, maybe they even have a sense of humor. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> or, the, or they're intrigued enough by us to answer these questions. When you hear, well, I'll be, the first thing you think of is, is uh, some old timer listening to what you have to say and like he's your next door neighbor or something. Well, I'll be. I said, Randy doesn't own it. I do now. As we begin night two, Beth feels a very strong energy that she thinks we need to document before we start our investigation. I continued to walk down here and got just about right here. And all of a sudden there was no noise. I mean, zero, like you could hear a pin drop. It was almost, it was, it was very eerie silence. Can, I, you, can you describe what the sound was that you were hearing? Oh yeah, I mean, it was just like, I could hear that, you know, but more, you know, more intense and louder. And it came out of this room here? It came, it was, yeah, it's almost like it came to the threshold of the door. And- See what, Carrie, come with me, Scotty, stand Beth real quick. The energy in this room is intense and what Beth is feeling right now will later be confirmed. And you said this bathroom felt weird too? That bathroom, yeah, I went in that bathroom today because whenever, I, I came back, I was like, I wanna, I wanna face my fears of that room and right. see what it was because so many times in the past I've, I've had experiences and I didn't face, face them head on. 
and I've regretted it, regretted it. And so this time I decided I was going to come into the room that scared me the most. And this is the room. And this is the room. Um, and I walked into the bathroom for the first time and um, I'm opening up with my um, sensitivity, my abilities, um, and in the past I really haven't opened up with, with my ability um, to, you know, like, I don't know if I would call myself a medium, I don't know. Um, you're, you're very empathic, Beth. Yes, I, I mean. You are very sensitive. I've held back for a long time, but I feel like it's time for me to go ahead and expose it and let it, um, be seen by other people besides you guys, y'all, you know, y'all. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I walked into this bathroom and I know for sure there's something bad that happened in that bathroom. And Scotty, um, you said he felt a drowning yes. happen in here? He felt like that. That's what he felt like when he so walked in So I walk in, in this bathroom right here, it, it feels mm -hmm. very heavy. Yes. Something definitely bad's happened in there and I feel like it's a female, um, and whether it be a drowning or something, I think that somebody may have lost their life in there or tried to. Beth decides to do a spirit box burst session and what she is about to document is chilly. How did you pass in, the, in this bathroom? <gasps> My husband held me down. <gasps> My husband held me down. Yeah. You did. Did he mean to kill you? This response is absolutely remarkable. And we also believe it's linked to the first voice Scotty documented on our way up to the second floor during our first investigation. As we prepare production for our next shoot, we document something none of us expected, and our investigation goes in a completely different direction. <laughs> we like your equipment. <gasps> what? What did it say? It, we like your equipment. Oh, oh. Is there a database? Are you me right now? You, you caught that, me. didn't you? You're filming right now on that yeah, camera. I'm filming. Is there a database? Maybe we need to ask a few questions right here. Wow. So we documented it on camera. This response is undeniable. Something clearly understands we are using equipment for communication. We like your equipment. What? What did it say? It, we like your equipment. After months of intense research and discovering the unsettling story of Dr. Dezita, we decide to attempt communication with him directly by using the Estes method. Oh, I heard my name. You couldn't go home. Who couldn't go home? Hooray! <gasps> It said, I'm here in a really scary voice. Who's here? This voice, it's, it was the same voice, and I heard it many times over that spirit box. <gasps> Ew, y'all, his voice. He said, Nathan, you are mine. No, I'm not yours. Oh my God, I got chills, dude, everywhere, everywhere. Desita, if that's you, I'm calling you out. You are an evil Walk in. man. Of course, I can't hear what's being asked. And what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm trying to say out loud. And nothing at the moment was really making sense to me. But that's the point of it. You just say what you hear. What did you do here? I told, I told you you're gonna be hungry. Dark meat. <laughs> that made no sense. It kind of does. Keep going. Now. What is your business in this hotel? What did you do to the women here that you 
hypnotized. Just forget it. That's right. Just forget about what? Power. Did you have power? Did you play your role as a devil in your Hollywood movie because you feel the, you are the, the devil? So later on in his life, in the 50s, there was a film that came out called Glenn or Glenda. And he landed a role in there. And the, his role was appropriate. His role was to play Satan. And his pictures for that film uh, were all over Hollywood at that time, all over monster magazines. He became famous after his death. One of the Hollywood producers, uh, I think his name was Weiss, uh, described Dr. Gazeta or Captain Gazeta as being one of the most frightening people that he had ever met. Behemoth, devour, listening. Behemoth is a demon. So are you a demon in the afterlife? We have several forms. What the f Pull her out, pull her out. Okay. End it, end it, end it, pull her out. Stop. Next thing I know, I, I say what I'm hearing and I'm getting pulled out of this method. What? Stop, 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 stop. What? Pull, pull, dude, holy What? That was getting too intense. Know what I do. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. You didn't know what behemoth was. I was like, behemoth is a demon. No way, and I answered. I swear to God. And then he goes, are you a demon in your afterlife? And immediately you go, we have many forms. I'm summoning the devil every time. No, Kara, like seriously, like that's what came through. It is. Like that's exactly what came through. So that's when I was like, no, I pulled her out. We had to close the session out. Y'all, I heard whoever y'all were talking to at first had the same voice, and it was low and growly. They were trying to get a hold of Here, take this real quick. Bro. But this is the thing. Like, I closed that session because I felt like it was about to get, it was about to take a whole different Yeah, we turn. don't want to talk to that. No, 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 no. But the thing is, Kara, it's manipulating. That's what it's doing. It's trying to scare us. And it is. I understand what it's doing. What I think it's trying to do is trying to get us to leave location. It doesn't want us to find out what it is or what it's done. I feel like he was an evil individual. So he's his, just yeah, I feel, yes. I feel like his energy is negative in the afterlife. After all the investigations we've conducted, there is still one more thing we must do. What started all of this? Can you tell us one of the names of the ladies that worked the front desk? Can you open this door or close it? Holy crap, that was intelligent. That was intelligent as hell. Check that out. If you can get that on the, if you can focus it on that. So yes, you can speak in that through that. That is wild. So it's obvious whoever or whatever you are, you're intelligent. Listen, this is your chance to come and talk to us. This is our last investigation here. Once we're done, we won't be able to come back. Please talk to us. Let us know what you want us to know. We want to preserve your history, your story. And we have cameras here that will document this. 
It just, uh, the, I think the question I have to him more so is, you know, how does a spirit energy have enough power to make these doors shut or anything move? You know what I'm saying? Because the clip that you sent me footage of, these doors are, cl are clearly shutting by themselves. No breeze, calm day outside, nothing. Correct, outside. Now, am I gonna sit here and tell you, all of you at home watching this right now, that this is paranormal? No, I'm not gonna say it's paranormal, I don't know. But what I can and what I can't you know, wrap my head around and introduce the theory of is how the behaviors of these doors were acting as they were moving. They weren't just you know, moving in and, and continuous motion. No, they had, the, like, there was a purpose behind the movements of these doors. And then he began to tell me stories about the doors that were slamming at that same entryway. And the doors would open, there would be no breeze, and then they would slam shut. And so he actually removed the doors because it was, it, that part had bothered him and, and some other visitors there that it had happened while uh, they were there. And they said that they would never go back. 